Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to speak in such extreme terms. I feel like one is a little strong, but I think he is disappointed of like, I could have played and made my opponent's life more difficult and could have pressed him more. And in that case, yes, maybe if he pressed and pressed and pressed, he could have won the game. But I don't think objectively there's anything yeah. overwhelmingly advantageous for him. Okay, yeah, fair. But it was definitely his best night or f- best game is black of the day, right? Um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah. And now we see a, a very quick end game here, which, okay, well, with the white pieces, you'd hope to have a slight edge. Your bishop on g2, always better than the opponent bishop on the light squares because, well, you're going to need to protect your c6 pawn. The bishop on g2 covers the scope of the diagonal. You might play bishop e6, actually, to put your bishop on d5 or knight on d5 as yep. a way to close that diagonal. Um, but because Maxime's moving so quickly, I imagine he's very familiar with his position. We have 11,000 of you watching in English right now across multiple platforms and uh, many more international. I want to take this moment just to remind everybody that right after the SCC today is uh, Femme Batal, another team chess battle. We haven't done one of those in a while. The last time team chess happened, Robert Hess and I were on the losing side versus the chess bras. We don't want to talk about it. But we have a Femme Batal that is Europe versus North America going down right after this. So see those ladies, Maria Emilianova, Anna Rudolph, Alexander Botez, and Jennifer Shahadi playing team chess right after this. Should be exciting. So Yeah, I don't even who know. You got, who you got the... in that match, by the way? They don't watch our shows, so you can be totally honest. I was about to say, I'm not even sure who the favorite is. Yeah, I think it's a actually... very balanced match. I think yeah. I'm leaning team Europe. Um Okay. You're going to say why, or are you just going to let me know that you're leading? leading I feel like Anna is potentially the most active. Like, of the four players, I feel like she might be the strongest right now. Jen is okay. Jen is right there with her. So I think sometimes if you're, like, looking at the matchup, you c- I think Anna might be the strongest overall player right now of the four, and that kind of makes me lean their way. Okay. I think that um, Alexandra can make or break it in the sense, I mean, that she plays. Sometimes she does the Botez Gambit, blunders her queen, but... Most of the time, she's playing very well, and she has very active ideas. Which, right. and, and when I say that, you see some of these even elite players where in any given game, you're like, they're going to win or lose, but you're not expecting them to be solid. Someone like Mama Jaro, we often expect that yep. out of him. Um, so I think that I would probably also lean towards Team Europe slightly uh, because of they're, they're a bit more active, it feels like. But I don't know. I have something about Team America. I, I agree. Um, we, and, you know, uh, Alexander Botez and Eric Rosen teamed up at the uh, the Twitch Rivals event we had, the Komodo Boss Rush, and they way outperformed their objective strength in in major part because of their chemistry. And I think Alexandra is a fantastic teammate. She's very good in, in with just knowing knowing the right way to find good chemistry. And I think that that's I think that's a, a huge point in their favor. So good point. That'll It's 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 going to be a toss up. So. Well, you know, it's not going to be a toss-up. This game right this here. This game right here. This looks fantastic for Wesley, and he might be about to take a two-game lead. Yeah, I mean, this what is, just uh, happened? Here comes the B game. file, and I'm happy to see you. This is was the worst way possible for White to regain the pawn. You have these doubled E pawns and split queenside pawns, and Black's rook is already kind of in your face on the second rank. So there's rook well, D2. Okay, I thought he was going to rook D2 and double on the... Uh, I, I think he maybe still should, but... He's kind of in control anyway. You can play rook 8 to b7. He plays it before I can highlight it. Um, and again, white's rooks are much more stuck than black's. Well, what about rook d1 here? Rook d1, I have rook c2, I think. Then I'll go rook a4. It looks very awkward, but at the very least, I'm stopping you from infiltrating. To the back cave we go. Let's analyze. Rook d1, he goes for it. Rook c2, rook a4. At some point, okay, we're getting this exact line. That's why we're in the back cave. So maybe, maybe I go for rook b to b two and sacrifice a seven. Mm. But, but probably not, uh, right? Because yeah. Oh, if, okay. I love this movie four because I was going to say one of the big problems with this line, Robert, is if even even if you take on e two, I can kind of get out and run into the light square. So this movie four does have my threat in mind. What you're doing is you're trapping the king here so that now if you go for this second rank, it might come with a mating net. The king can't get out. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, and that's why he played g4, right? To kind okay, of... s- play c5 then. I want to take your e4 pawn away. And you know th- after that, my king can go to f3. So I think c5 here is a pretty good I move. think c5 is key because if you don't, you're going to see rook b to b2 because the king is trapped. But all right, you're right. He finds c5 and looks like Maxime might be escaping by the right now many hairs on his chinny-chin-chin. 
yeah, he's copying me. No shave November. Yep. We uh, we have a lot of similarities. Just he's a much better chess player. And I see Jan Nepomshi in the chat saying, it's a coin toss, I think, though I'd say MVL is stronger in bullet. So that's uh, Jan Nepomshi's take on Yeah, and that's, that's been kind of my take, too. But I think uh, right now, obviously, Wesley up a game for a reason. And this is... I got a feeling about today. I know we knew this was going to be a good match, but something tells me, I don't know, you feeling overtime? What do you got? Free chess, I'm here for it. Free chess. So free chess, which is what we get out of it's what we get out of you, right? You've been doing these for free for years. Gosh, I know. Somebody called the IRS. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, F5 played. Yeah. Is he going to I was wondering if he was going to take it and just try to play his second rook to the fourth rank and try to take this G-pawn, but instead he plays F4, which to me, I feel like you're not really threatening much. Because if you take on E3, you, oh, actually, you are. F takes E3 is pretty Yeah, good. F takes, take rook takes, you win the rook. Yeah. With rook so F4 actually, check. We should show that. Yeah, let's show it. F takes E3. Okay, we'll just make a random move. If F takes E3, rook takes E3, this is the threat. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Game over. So... Okay, so rook d4 stops that. But I, I do think black is still in the driver's seat. Now he can take and take d4. He's won a pawn. Um, he has h6 here. H6 is probably take on a5 and then you know, at least restore material equality for the time yeah. being. No, you're right. That means he has to count. Oh, rook d5. You know what he was doing? He was double-checking the king upon ending. Classic Wesley. Yeah, but Wesley's up a pawn here. So yeah, he he's can up a pawn. Afford... Now you can give up h7. And try to run, I think. Uh, no, he wants to go to G7? Here. Really? Because otherwise it's a draw. Oh, oh, wow. He plays on. Well, he has the C-pawn, and White's king is sort of cut. And Black's king can help the C-pawn push. So don't be surprised if he just gives up the H6-pawn. But C5 here says, you know, go for that H-pawn, have at it. Yeah. And I'm going to start pushing my C-pawn. The downside yep. is... White can go h4. I thought h4 instead of rookie six check. Okay, maybe I'll go He's h4 gonna anyway. He's going to do it anyway, yeah. Wait, but C3 now? Whoa, is he too fast? I think he's too fast. Wesley's got that look like, hey, dude. I yeah. I think like... you miscalculated that. Like, he almost just looked across the camera. By the way, the players can see each other on camera if they choose to do so because it's in a shared and secured Zoom call. I know some of the players, we've talked with them, like keeping the camera up because they can't see their opponent's reaction. Um, wow. Maxime may have just... Yep. So let, let's analyze. Let's back up real quick because I think you, you pointed out maybe there was a better move order. Instead of taking h6, he needed to play h4 right away, but still c4. Yes. Well, but if, you, if you're if you pawn, I'm trying to think. So if you play h4 right away, does he gain a tempo there or is it still c4? As I, you I mentioned? think still c4 because I can even take back on g5. And if rookie 5, king b4 takes, I still have c3, still very fast. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. So maybe, maybe this idea that Wesley kind of peeked over at Maxime. He was kind of like, I think I'm winning here. Notice the notice the bridge idea, everybody. The the point is rook c8 check is blocked by rook c7, and this pawn is, is still too fast. Baby girl on c1. The perfectly placed rook because it, it helps you uh, stop a rook check from behind the pawn, and also when the rook tries to get on the side of the pawn, you have rook d1. Yep. So either you're going rook to c7 or to d1, yep. and I was just highlighting that. The third reason the rook is perfectly placed, it also was stopping any white king run over.